Hello athletes, this is Travis back for another training talk and today we are going to be talking about resting heart rate and how to measure your resting heart rate and how incredibly valuable knowing your resting heart rate and tracking your resting heart rate on a daily basis can be for your training. And now this is a video that is applicable well beyond the sport of rowing so any athlete is going to benefit from knowing and tracking their resting heart rate and honestly anybody just in general that just is interested in their health and wellness and wants to kind of stay on top of how their kind of base metabolism is is working on a day to day basis um, this could be helpful information all right particularly when it comes to tracking whether you are fighting any kind of infection and we'll get into that in a little bit but the first thing I want to talk about is how we should be measuring your resting heart rate and so you want to think about uh, getting and capturing your lowest heart rate during the day almost as a sort of competition and the way that I found most effective to do that is very first thing in the morning before you get started and get moving with your day is you want to get that measurement and now you want to do this kind of before you get out of bed and before you start kind of you know doing whatever you need to do but with one exception you should use the restroom all right because a full bladder is going to elevate your your heart rate and so you want to basically wake up it's all right if it's not like the moment you open your eyes you know if you're laying in bed and you're just kind of looking at your phone or just uh, just laying back and slowly letting your body kind of uh, come to that's fine but before you kind of get up and moving you're going up and downstairs you're going in the kitchen to cook anything go to the restroom and then come back and lay back down in bed get your heart rate monitor strapped on have your heart rate watch uh, nearby and get it set and ready to record so one, uh, the best thing to do if you have a heart rate that records over time is to set it up to record for five minutes and then whatever over the course of that five minutes, whatever you see is the lowest heart rate recorded in that five minutes, that's going to be what you're going to record as your resting heart rate. Now, I do want to emphasize the fact that you are laying down, all right? So it's very important to be prone when you're trying to measure your resting heart rate because uh, if you are elevated, either if you're sitting up or if you're standing up, your heart rate is going to uh, rise a little bit because your heart has to work a little bit extra to counter gravity. And so if you're prone, the heart isn't doing that extra, that extra work. And like I said before, this is almost like a competition. You're doing everything you can to get that heart rate as low as possible, right? Because you're trying to eliminate any other factors that could be influencing what that heart rate measurement is. So you're there, you're lying down, you got your heart rate, and you can start that timer five minutes. And then once you do that, you just want to kind of lay down, close your eyes, focus on controlling your breathing very slow, very rhythmic. You want to relax all the muscles of your body and basically just try to get that heart rate as low as you possibly can for that five minutes. And at the end of the five minutes, your heart rate monitor will beep. You know you're done and you can check it out and see whatever your lowest heart rate is for that time and write that down in your training journal. Um, if you don't have a heart rate monitor that records, or a heart rate monitor that uh, will, if it does record, will tell you what your lowest heart rate is. Some of them only do your average or your maximum heart rate. Um, if that's the case, that's fine. You just, uh, while you're lying there, you just want to get to the point where you can either lie on your side or just kind of, you know, hold the hold your hand up a little bit. You know, holding your forearm up from the elbow isn't going to elevate your heart rate, uh, you know, any significant amount. So you can just hold it and you can watch it and then you just got to see what the lowest that you can get it over the course of the five minutes. And actually, if you're new to this, if you haven't done a lot of, uh, spent a lot of time working on just trying to relax and, and working through any kind of meditation practices, working on controlling your breathing, then even if you have a heart rate monitor that records, it may be helpful to spend a couple weeks there where you're actually watching your heart rate monitor as you're recording that resting heart rate each morning because you can kind of then practice your breathing techniques and your relaxation techniques and you can see on a B2B basis how those actions are affecting your heart rate and that's going to basically train you to understand what you need to be doing to relax and to get into your most efficient state and this is going to be extremely helpful as an athlete because in an athlete the only energy you want to be expending is energy that's going to create impulse all right and so you want to be used to relaxing as much as possible while you're working at a very high level and that's why you see when you when you watch a high level athlete it looks like they're not working very hard uh, it's because their work is very, very focused on the task of creating impulse and creating forward motion or backward motion in the case of, of rowing. Um, so 
there it is. You have your resting heart rate. You have it measured in your journal. Now you also want to be keeping track of other factors that could be affecting your resting heart rate. And so it's going to be fairly common for your resting heart rate to go up and down maybe two, three beats on any given day. So you got like a five or six beat range that you're going to regularly measure that resting heart rate. And you can track other things that are happening that could influence. And so maybe uh, your room was particularly hot um, at night. Any kind of heat is going to elevate your heart rate. Certainly heat or humidity is going to elevate your heart rate. Um, so knowing if your room was a little bit uncomfortable, maybe you're in a hotel, it didn't quite settle right, the bed's not super comfortable, maybe you just, uh, you had a lot of kind of anxiety dreams or you had a nightmare that was affecting the quality of sleep, maybe you didn't get to sleep until late, um, all those things could be affecting your heart rate. If you have a lot of stress in your life at any given time, uh, maybe if you ate a meal that just didn't settle well with you the night before, all those things, if you're writing those in your journal, and you're cross-referencing those with your heart rate on any given day, you know, if you're regularly seeing your heart rate, you know, two beats, two, three beats above your, your average, um, anytime you get a poor night's sleep, then you know, all right, if you see three beats up, then it's probably just from that poor sleep. And then later on, you can start to kind of track the big anomalies. And that's kind of the crux of what we want to be talking about here is how knowing those large anomalies in your resting heart rate each morning are going to inform what you should be doing for any day's training or how you should be adjusting your training that is scheduled for that day. So if you're sitting there and your resting heart rate is maybe, you know, five to eight beats higher than normal, then that's a sign that you're a little bit outside of that kind of standard deviation and that you want to kind of approach things cautiously, all right? And so you may be coming off a hard training session. Um, you may need an extra, a little bit of extra rest to kind of bring that heart rate back to where it should be. There could be any other of a myriad of factors that are affecting your body's ability to kind of recover on a day-to-day -day basis or to get to its kind of full rested state where it's ready for whatever training session you have for that day. Um, I would kind of experiment with that a little bit and, and again, keeping track in your training log and keeping notes and being able to track the days that your resting heart rate is high versus what's happening with training on that day. But you can get a log and you can find those days and if you find that in each of those days that you train in your training session just isn't a very good training session, um, then you can kind of adjust to accommodate that. Um, you know, certainly it's not, there's the difference between just having an off day and having a bad training session because you haven't adequately recovered from your previous training. And so you're going to have to make a judgment call or you're going to have to bring in someone more experienced as a coach to kind of help you make that judgment call of whether it's a matter of just uh, kind of being ready for a non-ideal training session or whether that's telling you that you need to take an extra day of rest before you dive into whatever normal training and uh, stressing kind of training load that you're putting on, all right? And in other videos, I talk about kind of a, a difference between a loading day and an unloading day. So essentially, if you're finding you're not, you're not fully recovered from the previous training session, it may be advisable to switch from the plan of a loading day to an unloading day, all right, where you're just doing some easy aerobic work or you're doing some active recovery. Now, if you wake up and your heart rate is significantly higher than normal, so we're talking 12, 15 beats or more, then that's a really good sign that your body is probably fighting some kind of infection, all right? That is a very far high deviation from what is standard. And the great thing about having this information and knowing this information is it's kind of like an intelligence service for your body because your body, as soon as it starts to fight any kind of infection, as soon as your immune system is activated, your heart rate is going to elevate, all right? And so the symptoms though, the normal symptoms that you would experience, whether it's kind of a sore throat or maybe kind of a little bit of sore muscles or achiness or fatigue, those things aren't going to start to manifest until your immune system starts to lose the battle with that infection. And so normally that's going to be kind of your first indication that something's wrong. But if you're keeping track of your resting heart rate on a day-to-day -day basis and you see that it's significantly higher than normal but you don't have any other symptoms going on, then that's intelligence that you can use to kind of help you avoid making mistakes in your training. And so let's give an example of someone who doesn't have heart rate or is, doesn't track their heart rate and doesn't know their resting heart rate and they're going through the normal day, they feel normal, they feel fine, but 
their heart rate is elevated because behind the scenes their immune system is fighting off some kind of infection. Well that athlete, and I'm sure all of us have done this before, I've certainly done this before, is you get into a day, that training session for that day, and and it's just you're just not feeling good all right it's taking a long time to warm up your effort is high but your speed is low um and certainly if you're doing a hard day that day then it is just you're there it's extremely frustrating you're working really hard but you're not going nearly as fast as you think you should be or that you're used to going for that training session and generally you finish that training session and you're just feeling down in the dumps because you just had a totally crappy row um, or other workout if you're not a rower and uh, and then lo and behold later that day you start to get that feel that sore throat you feel super fatigued and it's not just fatigue from the workout you're starting to feel that kind of achiness that's typical and then the next day you wake up and you're just on your butt all right you've just been knocked out by whatever illness and essentially what has happened in that situation is kind of you think about your body as this fortress all right with its walls all right and you got your army in that in that fortress and you got your drawbridge up normally well there's an invading army of whatever that infection is and they are they're coming and then they start to assault the walls well, if you don't have anybody looking outside that castle to see that invading army coming and you're just kind of going on with your day-to-day -day as normal on the inside of your castle, well, maybe you drop that drawbridge because you want to go out and you want to go ride in the fields or you want to go hunting or whatever you would do on a daily basis to lower that drawbridge. And lo and behold, there is an army out there, right? There's an affection out there. And so if you don't know your heart rate, you don't have that intelligence to know that something is going on out there, um, then when you start to work out, you are lowering that drawbridge, right? You are taking energy away from your defenses, from that wall that you've created, your immune system, and you're basically opening up a gap in that wall by lowering your drawbridge. You're taking energy away from your immune system and you're diverting it into stressing the body to create a training stimulus, all right? And if you do that and you push through, let's say you're just like, uh, I don't care, it's, something's going on, I feel really crappy today, this isn't going good, but I'm gonna push through the session because I don't wanna feel like a quitter, all right? Well, you do that and all of a sudden you've left your drawbridge down for more than enough time for that infection to come in and do serious damage to, to your home, all right, to your body, to your castle, all right? And so that's what's happening if you don't know your heart rate. If you had, your measure, if you had measured your heart rate in the morning and it's significantly higher than normal, then if your heart rate is 12, 15 beats higher than normal, then you should definitely not do any kind of training that day that is gonna create a load, all right, to create a significant training stimulus. And I would even be cautious doing any kind of unloading training session, any kind of active recovery or very light activity. You may just need to just focus on resting and making sure you're getting good nutrition and hydration in your body to give the body all the resources it needs to fight off whatever infection it is inevitably trying to uh, prevent from taking hold in your body. And now you go back a little bit and let's say your heart rate has been elevated that kind of eight that we talked about before and not quite that 12 or 15, then maybe you were either just a little bit tired from the previous day and you gotta be cautious with that or maybe you were eight because you were on your way up to getting to that 12 to 15 and later in that day when it's time to train and you're starting to feel those symptoms and you look and, and you think back and you're like, oh, wow, well, my heart rate was elevated a little bit this morning. Maybe it's gotten worse because uh, my warm up is not going very good. I've been rowing five, 10 minutes and I just feel like crap. You know, my body's not loosened up. I feel super heavy. My splits are really slow. Then you have that other information, that intelligence from your resting heart rate to say, okay, I need to stop today and I need to shift and just kind of do some passive recovery and focus on getting ready for the next day. And then hopefully you get to the next day and that resting heart rate is back to normal and it hasn't taken hold. But for the vast majority of us, all right, just resting is not going to completely eliminate our susceptibility to that infection. And so you're probably going to still get sick that next day but you're not gonna get as sick, all right? And more importantly, you're not gonna be as sick for as long, all right? And so that you're not gonna lose a significant amount of training because instead of kind of pushing through and compromising your immune system by taking energy from it and putting it into a training session, you've allowed it to battle 
that infection. And so that once that infection gets hold of your body, it's not going to do a whole lot of damage, all right? You're just going to be sick and you're not as sick for not as long. And then you'll be able to do what all of us want to do is to get healthy and get back into your normal training. And so that's kind of the summary of resting heart rate and how it can inform what's happening on a day to day basis. If you see a spike in that resting heart rate, be super cautious and maybe just you know decide oh I'm not training today I need to be careful I need to pay attention to whether any of those other uh, symptoms of being sick are going to manifest and if I get to the next day my heart rate is back to normal awesome you can get back into your normal training but if my heart rate is not back to normal then I need to continue to exercise caution and give the body what it needs to to be healthy and to be strong and to fight off any kind of uh, infection or illness that's trying to take hold so that's it um, there's a lot more that I can talk about in terms of heart rate and using heart rate as a signal and training. I'll go ahead and split that up into a separate video. And so we'll talk about kind of the three checkpoints that I use in training. So we have uh, effort, all right, ready for perceived effort, your speed, whatever your typical speed is, and then your heart rate. And so I'll make another video that'll probably come out shortly uh, talking about how to use those three points to decide what to do on any given basis with your training once you actually start a session. But uh, in the interest of keeping this uh, video focused, let's stop there. So uh, if you found this helpful, this like, please uh, give a like down below. Uh, share this video with people. If you know someone else that could benefit from this knowledge and this information, subscribe if you like this video and you would like to see more like it and you're not already subscribed. Once you do subscribe, if you hit that little bell icon, you'll actually get an email or some notification whenever I do post a new video so that you know it's been up. And if you have any questions, please, please comment down below and engage. Uh, I try to answer as many of those questions that I can so long as they're kind of relevant and helpful to anybody else that might be reading them and uh, and I appreciate all of the uh, all of the input and all the interaction that those of you that have been watching have been given the channel so far so that's it this is Travis signing off take care guys uh, stay safe and uh, yeah till the next video bye